I don't know who need to hear this, but y'all really need to start putting respect on this Los Angeles Lakers championship. Bruh, never in my life have I seen so many people try to discredit a championship win. Y'all talking as if the Lakers walked to the bubble, shook Adam Silver's hand, and he just handed the trophy over. That's not how it happened at all. They fought just as hard as the other 15 teams. Now, I'm gonna keep it real. LeBron's one of my favorite players, but this video has absolutely nothing to do with LeBron James. In fact, I'm excluding him from the equation altogether. This is about the Los Angeles Lakers. In other other words lebron james don't even exist who's the lebron who that so with all that being said i'm about to use this time to combat all the bogus narratives that i've been hearing with cold hard facts you ready let's go the lakers had a stacked team they were supposed to win now when you say stacked are we talking about talent because the lakers invested in players that the league didn't even want they had dwight howard oh hey you talking about the same dwight howard that played for five different teams in the past five seasons like come on now cut it out that man dwight howard was getting passed around like a damn backwood he didn't play for the rockets hawks hornets wizards and then he was traded to the grizzlies where they eventually bought him out which made him available for the lakers to get him and even then the lakers only took a chance on him because the marcus cousins got injured two weeks prior and if that didn't make the situation crazy they signed that man to a one-year non-guaranteed contract his money wasn't even guaranteed okay but what about rondo you mean the same rondo that played for five teams in a span of five seasons because they labeled him uncoachable bro they had anthony davis a top five player why yes yes they did and they made a fair trade to get him the lakers gave the pelicans brandon ingram the league's most improved player Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart, three first round draft picks, which included a fourth overall pick from the 2019 draft. So basically, the Lakers gave the Pelicans a bright future in exchange for Anthony Davis on a one year deal. Not to mention, the New York Knicks was also a preferred landing spot for Anthony Davis, but they were too stubborn and refused to give up Mitchell Robinson and Kevin Knox. You Knicks fans have a different type of loyalty. As for Anthony Davis being a top five player, oh, trust me, he's definitely been a top five player for years now. But everybody in the basketball community didn't view him in that light until he started balling with the Lakers. Prior to signing to the Lakers, it was Anthony Davis' injury prone. He can't lead a team. He can't win. Never been past the second round. But now grown-ass men are crying because he was fairly traded to a better situation. All right, but what about Markeith Morris cleared waivers and was signed into the disabled player exception, which was only made possible because Boogie Cousins was released. J.R. Smith and Dion Waiters were signed off their damn couches, and that was after Avery Bradley refused to come to the bubble. Danny Green, he came in free agency. So if you're trying to make an argument there, you you may as well hold your L, bruh. So were the Lakers stacked? Yes, but it was due to chemistry. You can't penalize a team for taking players that nobody else wanted, but they found a way to make it work. That's like selling somebody a busted old car and you get mad because the person gave it a paint job and put a new engine in that mother like, bro, you trashed it, not him. This was the easiest path to an NBA championship. At this point, I can't tell you whose memory is worse, the basketball communities or Dory from Finding Nemo, because at this point, I genuinely cannot tell the difference. Bruh, do y'all not remember the 73-9 and nine Golden State Warriors? Okay, now, do you remember when they added the second best player in the NBA and Kevin Durant? Okay, then you should remember that they ended their playoff run 16-1. and one. And that one loss came in the NBA Finals against the Cavaliers. Let's say I walk up to you with a $100 bill in each hand, completely equal in value. And I say, in this hand, you have a 93% chance of winning this money. In this hand, you have a 74% chance. Which one you gonna pick? <laughs> if you said 74, chances are you a dumb they played the 35-win Portland Trailblazers. You mean the same Portland Trailblazers that the media said that the Lakers should fear? With Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, Carmelo Anthony, and Nurkic? What am I missing? They played the small Houston Rockets. Bruh, I am a Houston Rockets fan, and majority of the fan base was trying to figure out what the f*** we was doing. But at the end of the day, that's a choice. That ain't got nothing to do with the Lakers. They avoided the Los Angeles Clippers. How can you avoid a team that wasn't good enough to make it? <laughs> can somebody please tell me at what point, as sports fans, did we start penalizing championship teams for who they didn't face? Like, bruh, logically, I cannot understand downplaying an accomplishment because somebody else's absence. That just does not make sense to me. Hey, yo, Drew really got her number. For real? Yeah, I'm dead serious, bro. Like, oh he my, told yo, you. Yo, bro, he, bro he would not have got her number if Ray Ray wasn't at work right now. Oh, you know yeah. he get all the girls. Hear that!
Well, you can't deny that the bubble allowed them to get rest. Okay, and everybody got the same exact amount of rest as they did. But we also have to keep in mind that the NBA bubble caught a lot of people off guard because sports were completely canceled. Gyms were closed, teams couldn't meet together, nobody could go to practice facilities. And y'all think this was easy? Before the NBA playoffs even started, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Anthony Davis, George Hill, Austin Rivers, all these guys went on record to discuss how stressful and difficult this championship run was going to be. And we're supposed to sit here and believe a bunch of people who ain't never stepped foot inside that NBA bubble, let alone a professional basketball court in general? Come on now, f*** out of here. Now, I was able to say all that without mentioning LeBron James once, and I gave you nothing but cold, hard facts. You can search them yourself. With that being said, if you still can't respect this Lakers championship, you're simply a hater. And it's cool. Nobody's mad at you. We ain't judging you. We just want to accept you for who you are. If it look like a duck, quack like a duck, and waddle like a duck, it damn sure ain't a cow. Just keep it a bean. <laughs> it's only entertainment.